We're at the uh, Titan Missile Museum. It's about a half hour south of Tucson. And uh, let's go check this place out. sits in that box right there and imagine this last door was shut it was flush to this wall here the crew was asking for permission to have this door unlocked and so the commander pushed a button on the console and unlocked the door the, the glass doors they were um, hung by four hydraulic pins so when the commander pushed the button it just retracted the pins. And then the low man on the totem pole had to pull open the door. And usually that was the bee man. And I actually have an employee who used to be the bee man <laughs> at a silo located here in Tucson. These glass doors, there's four of them here in the silo, as are all silos. They have four of them. They were the first put in the silos. And when they were hung in the silos, they were hung a quarter of an inch off the ground. They remain a quarter of an inch off the ground. You can see it right there. Now, this side of the glass door, that's called the soft side. In the event there had been a launch, natural disaster, or this silo had been compromised in any way, this would all be gone. But on the other side of the threshold, everything would remain the same. There is a yellow hook right here on this second glass door. This yellow hook married with this hook right here. The crew locked themselves in at night. They call this the night hook. Would anybody like to try their strength at moving this door? Would you like to try? Okay. Well, that's what we're going to determine. You are. You're stronger than most. This woman is stronger than she thought she was. She just moved 6,000 pounds, three tons. Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty. It's not as hard as it looks <laughs> because they're on hydraulic pins. So, yeah, so it's not as hard as it looks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deputy Commander sat right here, managed this console, 
And then the communications for the entire silo. What is your name? Jackie. Jackie, nice to meet you. Then there were two enlisted employees, crew members. They were the uh, missile facility technician. He managed this panel right here and 14 others. And then the BMAC, the ballistic missile analyst technician, he managed all these panels right here, which guided the missile. When the crew, the four person crew, came on board for the 24 hour alert, the first thing that the commander, deputy commander, did was they came over here to the emergency war order safe and they put their respective locks on the safe. Neither one of them knew each other's code. Then the commander said, okay, people, we need to go through this silo and check it for readiness and accuracy. So what they did was they pushed every button, pulled every lever, opened and shut every single door. They did that and it took them three hours. And then they did it again 12 hours later. Hmm. And in the meantime, in between those checks, they monitored any messages that came across these boxes, okay? And then the employee that I have who was a VMAT on one of the missiles tells me that they played games and this one game called Pong, I have no idea what it was, but anyways, that's what he said that they played. And he also told me that this was the most boring job that he ever had <laughs> until this box went off. This control center here is uh, suspended. The only thing that's holding up this control center is this black hole. You'll see some large springs about this control center. They help in the event there was a launch, the vibration and shock of the missile, this control center would not feel it or hear it. In fact, if the commander, deputy commander, had copied all the consoles, as they often did, that would not even have a ripple in the coffee. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so in the event that the crew received a message from the President of the United States to launch, the message would sound like this. to launch from the President of the United States. Commander, Deputy Commander, immediately pick up the red notebooks and they write down that message. It is 41 characters in length and they write it down in their books. They, it, it actually repeated itself twice. So what they do is they exchange notebooks. And the reason why they're exchanging mm -hmm. notebooks is because they want to be certain that each one of them heard and wrote down the very same message. Then I imagine they jumped out of their seats, went over to that emergency war or safe, opened up the respective locks, and they pulled out three things. They pulled out the emergency war orders, time of launch, and the keys. Time of launch was always the responsibility of the deputy commander. So she picked up her grease pencil that sat here on her console and wrote time of launch on the bread between time clock or what the military called Zulu, or what we know uh, as universal time. Then the commander in the war orders received a six digit code. She turned around and gave that to the ballistic missile analyst technician, who in turn put it right here into the control butterfly metal block. What that did was that opened up this butterfly valve. A pen sat right here, when that code was put in and it was a good code, it released the pin, opened up the valve, and the propellants on the Titan II started mixing and flowing. Okay. Unlike Atlas and Titan I, we didn't store the, the fuel, the propellants on the missile, so we had to fuel it. And that took us about 30 minutes, so we were right behind the eight ball. Then, Commander, Deputy Commander, inserted their keys in their console. This is where the commander's key went. This is where deputy commander's key went. 
on the side of her console. There's actually seven feet between the two keys. The reason for that was they never wanted one person to be able to turn both keys at the same time. All right. So now, Commander, Deputy Commander, we are going to simulate a launch. This is how it's going to sound and look, okay? I'm going to ask the pair of you to put your hands on the keys. Not quite yet, though. And then, Commander, you're going to take over, and you're going to do an abbreviated countdown, beginning at 3, 2, 1. Then you're going to say launch. You're both going to turn the keys to the right, and you're going to hold for five seconds. And then, pardon my backside, then, Commander, these lights, launch enabled, batteries activated, APS powered, silo soft. Guidance go, fire engine, lift off are all going to light up. Not at the same time, but they'll light up. And I need you to tell me, this is your focus. I need you to tell me what light is lighting up so that I can let all of our guests know what's going on. Okay? All right. Are you ready? You'll have to stand up here. Commander, Deputy Commander, place your hands on the keys. Commander, go ahead and take over. Three, two, one. Launch. Turn your keys to the right. Pull for five seconds. Do we have launch. lights on? Go launch. ahead and release yeah. your keys, the pair of you. We have launch. Launch enabled. We have launch enabled. That means that the butterfly valve is unlocked and the propellants are flowing on the missile. Batteries activated. Batteries activated. That means that the two 28 volt batteries that are on the Titan II missile are charging. It only takes 28 seconds for those batteries to charge. Well, that's okay. APS power. APS power means that those two 28 volt batteries are fully charged. The missile's running on its own internal power. Silo soft. Silo soft means that the two 760 ton doors just opened up exposing the missile. Guidance go. That is the missile asking itself, where am I located right now? Where am I going by way of this guidance control indicator? Fire engine needs to get fire in the silo, so we're pumping 9,000 gallons per minute into the silo to put that fire out. That was the Glaxon alarm siren you just heard. Liftoff. We have liftoff, the Titan II now, and all of its 54 missiles are headed in the direction of the Soviet Union. The missile is traveling 18,000 miles per hour, 6,000 miles away to target two. How do we know it's going to target two? Code. Because it says right here on the commander's panel. All right. The, the, the missiles located in Tucson, Arizona, we're always going to target two unless otherwise changed by SAT. And the other locations were going to target one and three. We were sending all 54 of our missiles up and over in the direction of the Soviet Union. Can anybody tell me where target two is? If you are shaking your head no, you're right. We didn't know then where target one, two, or three was, and today it remains classified information, so you're all right. Now, can anybody tell me how long it's going to take to get to target two? Correct. Were you one that was, has been here before? <laughs> no? He's right. 30 minutes. 30 to 35 minutes to get to target two. And when we get there, we are going to create a ground burst. That ground burst is going to look like this. 450 feet deep hole, three quarters of a mile wide. Right? Now you're probably wondering, well, what does the crew do at this point? Well, they, I imagine, remain very calm, waiting for any messages that may come across these boxes, suggesting that they might have a chance to escape. If they were given orders to go ahead and escape, that's when they would go down to the third level and out the escape hatch. No. Well, what's the likelihood of them being able to do that when we've got Armageddon and nuclear war no. out there? Why would they? Nil to none. Correct. You're all right. No, they're probably not going to go any further than this control center. The crew had 30 days of food and water and only 21 days of air. 
So the scale was a little unbalanced. <laughs> the commander and deputy commander were the only two that carried weapons. So they came with pistols, but the two enlisted had none. All right, so now I'll share with you that the Soviet Union already had their weapons long before we had ours. We were in a hurry to produce the 141 Titan II's that we produced and the 54 silos that we built. We did it in 29 months. That's quick. That's quick for the government. This control center is a no alone zone, which means that there always had to be two people in this control center at all times. It could be a combination of the four, but always two. And oh, by the way, there was no air conditioning down here. It was also on cooling and fans, and they smoked. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We didn't know, and, and honestly, and some of it was kept secret. Yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't go advertise. It was kept secret. But when we really started learning was when they started to decommission them. And then it was in the paper. This is the only silo left out of all 54. This is uh, it. That was cool, that Titan Missile Museum. I really enjoyed that tour. Uh, found a spot about uh, 45 minutes outside of Tucson. It's on a ranch, I think it is. Anyway, there are a bunch of campsites here. It's in the mountains. The cell signal's good. You can stay here for a couple days, edit videos. And we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.